For the newly indoctrinated, Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files follows the story of a professional wizard in Chicago. We've started our podcast as a way to help break down the series' most important moments, characters, and lore. This is McAnally's Dresden Files podcast by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. Welcome to the McAnally's podcast brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode 6.1, A Family Cursed, where we are discussing the graphic novel Ghoul Goblin. My name is Tanzin, and I'm joined by Maggie. Hello, hello. And Jess. Hello. Harry Dresden, a Chicago private investigator and wizard, heads to a small, isolated Missouri town terrorized by Never Never Monsters. The singularly unfortunate Talbot family has suffered a curse that has decimated their numbers for generations, and only our hero can save them. That is, if he can survive hostile lawmen, the dark secrets of townsfolk, an ancient guardian spirit, and two deadly carnivores. Can Dresden cleanse the Talbot bloodline of its curse without a blood sacrifice of his own? I love how, like, it's like Jim Butcher just cannot help himself. He's just got to add on and add on and add on. He's like, three problems, not good enough. Let's make a four. Yeah. Five. (laughs) Another one. It's like he, like, goes to an auction to buy monsters yes, right. against his own characters, and he's just bidding against himself. <laughs> he just, like, keeps raising the battle. So we begin with the prologue, and the graphic novel begins in Cairo in 1917 with a noxious military man named Talbot. He seems to be entitled and demands a table at the local cafe. He even goes so far as to demand, to demand three people move from their table to accommodate him. The locals sitting at the table are less than pleased. Yeah. Yeah, he just had to sit through an altogether te- or tedious and altogether pointless strategy meeting in British military history. Yeah, and the guy's like, we're full. And he's like, I see an empty table. Just completely disregarding those th- those bloody wogs, which is apparently um, anyone not white. Basically a British um, and Australian slur for basically anyone who's not a white person. Mostly like Middle Eastern and stuff like that. Ooh. But apparently the Australians are reclaiming it and it's not nearly as offensive down there anymore depending on who and how it's used. But yeah. Hmm. So oddly enough, they um, take exception to that. Weirdly enough. Weirdly enough. Yeah. I mean, you've essentially got this, you know, <laughs> big shot British officer in a town where everyone's like, yeah, we don't want you to be here. Get lost. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, right. no way. In Cairo. Yeah, exactly. Right. And he's like, because yeah, they answer and he's like, I don't speak your barbarian tongue. And so he's like, well, I said, are you a fool? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And he's like, let go, you brown-skinned devil. And he's like, mm, there's more beneath the skin, like blood. And that's what you should watch out for. <laughs> yeah, he really just pisses the locals off completely. And he, it, the, 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 uh, not to get too spoilery, but I mean, this is the start of the curse that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Which, is this worthy of a lifelong generation curse that's kind of what i was thinking too i'm like i get this guy pissed you off and he was just yeah being snarty and throwing because yeah when they first when he first starts off and he's like get out of my way urchin and and the guy he's with lawrence is like um like have a care like there's a line or whatever and he's like yeah it's ordered by rank and uh, right so he's basically just full of himself and yeah shoving people out of the way to get his right so i'm like i get that well, it's just, He's if we were asshole? cursing every Karen, there'd be a lot less Karens. Like, <laughs> well, I suppose, but do we know for a fact that all, all like, okay, I was going to say, like, maybe him and his children, right, because if he's an asshole, maybe his children are assholes, and, right, but I'm like, you just need to go, like, a generation or two, not, like, the entire bloodline forever. Like, he's just kind of a douchebag, butting in line, and, like, saying, like, you're not good enough, get out of my table, and I'm like, I get that's not cool. But like you say, do his like great great grandchildren? I mean, I guess nineteen seventeen. So devil's, we devil's advocate that far, yeah. Uh, we don't know what they are. They maybe only know one trick. They can only do <laughs> generational bloodline curses, and that's that. It's all or nothing with these guys. Second of all, depending on their age, maybe you know your entire bloodline. You know, if the people around you were living for five hundred years at a time, then your generational bloodline is only gonna get to like his kids and maybe his grandkids before like the earth doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess, I guess that is fair. And I again, like my it is, point it is a little back, bit. It is only 1917. It is a like, little bit of a lot. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like ah, you know, we don't know who these people are. Because these could be just sort of great grandchildren or great, like 1917 to 
the 2000s. Yeah, I'm I think assuming. we're going great grandkids. Or no, great, great. So again, I'm like, I guess it wouldn't be super far. Like, I guess if these were the last ones or something. Which honestly, if they're killing out all these kids. <laughs> well, I mean, in 1917. Uh, and this is like, this happens just weeks after full moon ends. Yeah, so it's early so, 2000s. Yeah, so, so this it's is not really quite, only like, yeah, like. Just under 80, 100 years or something. Five years-ish. Yeah, and again, depending on how so old. a couple of generations. The, yeah, that, two, the, yeah. Two to three at the max. So that's why I was like, amended myself. And I was like, well, they should just be like, his kid's a grandkid. I'm like, well, I guess that's pretty much where we're at. I guess it's still. Well, I'm just me. thinking, because in the text, it does say, uh, eventually Bob goes on to say what happened to all the generations between then and now. And he goes on to the grandkids, and he doesn't continue on from there. So we know that we're at least at, we know that at least the parents are yeah. the great-great, which means the kids have to be the great-great-great. Yeah, so see, there seems you like, go. It seems like we're getting math a little far. It's a prolific uh, very, family. Very, yeah, they have kids young. But if, like, if you know like all of our parents die at 16, you got to have kids fast. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And maybe it's like the the uh, the loop guru or the curses be like, haha! Yeah. Not only are you cursed, but you have to be cursed you to, have, to have lots of children as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, yeah. I just thought it's that was funny bad. too. Yeah, you're right. It's like this is weeks after that. Like you think Harry would be like, all right, all right, all right, curses. Like we're good with this. Yeah, <laughs> let me jump right in. I'm used to this. Yeah. I know, he, he starts thinking werewolves, but you didn't immediately go to, like, a bloodline curse. That was the main cause of yeah, your right? werewolf in like, the last one, but all right, all right, too. They're like, oh, There's a month co- out from that. <laughs> yeah. So we hit current day where we join Harry underwater battling a sea monster. And I love this because I was just listening to... I guess oh, in this us? case, it's a lake monster. Shape of you? A lake monster. No, no, another podcast. Um, Bedtime Stories, I believe it's called. And I'd love to say who that is but um i just listened to the stories and i don't remember the guy's name uh anyways but they were talking about some it's all kind of like urban legend paranormal whatever kind of unexplained stories and things like that but uh, yeah there was just like right when i was starting to look i just listened to an episode where basically a monster described looking a lot like this had like stalked someone down like a road and like smashed up their car and stuff like that a creature from the black lagoon kind of thing yeah but sort of green and and gilled and and yeah just it looked like this thing yeah so that was kind of funny it was like hey wait a minute i, I did was- appreciate that the uh that uh butcher does drop the name of the black lagoon yeah, in uh-huh. case there was like a Mrs. or a Junior somewhere. <laughs> um, so he does shoot it underwater with his gun in, instead of using magic. And I did actually look this up because I was like, that can't be possible. You can shoot guns underwater. You can. Some They're not them. terribly per- uh, effective. Yes. About once, though. And they have to be very, very close because yeah. the oxygen is actually already located within the bullet itself. Trapped oh. within a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. So it's just enough to actually, so you can continually fire. You would get but, but the bullets themselves are just go like this. Yeah, and, well, it's and, immediate and downward resistance in the fire. water, yeah. right? Yeah. Compared to so, so they have to be very, very close so that yeah. that seem we know, that, that seen, lake like, monster some James Bond films and stuff was too, very, to get very up. close. <laughs> well, and really, I mean, he does. I mean, wasn't it like grabbing? I mean, yeah, it's got a hold of his leg. So I'm I'm gonna say that's pretty close. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I guess. Good he, point. But yeah, I do love that how he gives us a little explanation. Like again, just for those that well, I mean, again, newer to the series at this point. Well, well, this came out much later than the other books, but. Blah, 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 blah. It gives us that little recap of not being able to do magic underwater. That even if he wasn't sort of tired and drained already, he's completely surrounded um, by a body of water, which dampens. Tell that to mermaids. Well, that's a different sort of deal. Same thing as like never, never creatures can use their magic differently than mortal wizards. And yeah, but gives us a little recap on how he can't use uh, magic underwater because running water and large amounts of water and that sort of a thing disrupt the use of mortal magic so he can't just blast a spell at it even if he wasn't sort of tired so yeah harry resorts to what harry always resorts to yeah it's just let's shoot the fucker because they never expect that so yeah so so yeah so as we started this one i did notice so the illustrations being a little bit different from the first one we did jungle book Oh, jungle Book. I cannot stop saying freaking Jungle <laughs> Book. Do, 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 do. I know. I'm going to blame it on my uh, Scouts Canada involvement with Cub Scouts. <laughs> Welcome to the Jungle. Um, and I just found this illustration. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, they're fine as illustrations go. I can't draw worth a crap, so it's, but just didn't fit the same way of my picture. I found almost like a little more like, like what I'm used to in like a, like an Archie comic kind of style or something a little bit with like mm -hmm. the snub nose. Like, I'm not quite sure how to describe it and I'm no artist and I know nothing about nothing. Um, but yeah, I just... Art style was a little off. The art style for me personally was a little off and didn't sort of match up the same way to what I, I envisioned in my head and stuff like that and how I think of Harry, but... See, and I didn't mind this one as much as, uh, so the, the first one that we have, uh... Welcome to the Jungle? Welcome to the Jungle was, I really liked the, the artwork for that one. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then we go into uh, Full Moon, I think. Yeah, it does. Uh, they 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 remade Restoration of Faith, Stormfront, and Full Moon into graphic novels as well. Right, and and the artists for those ones were not my favorite. Also oh, bad. Yeah. But I <laughs> see. I haven't gone through those ones recently. Too. I, I think this one uh, that does this. The, you prefer this, this one is ones. like my number two. I would say I would agree with that. Okay. Oh yeah, I'd have to go back and check the others. Certain things like like certain illustrations in this and I'll probably mention them as we get to those points and I'm like oh yeah this like there were some characters or things that I was like I, I did like how and again for for the, the I can't say non-canon characters because they're canon but the non-regular like any new yeah new characters are fine yeah because I have no preconceived yeah. notions of right there's nothing built in my head right but yeah exactly yeah, well, Murphy, for, Harry etc etc those they're just wrong yeah it's not what they should be yeah exactly. I didn't mind the drawings of Murphy in this one to be honest that was like, one of the it ones it got I think the button nose quite correctly <laughs> yes that one I think was one but it, I think her hair was short by then and they drew it longer? They drew it longer. Yeah, and she had... Yeah. And I think that's just a little specific. So that's like. just a little... Although the beetle was... We haven't gotten to that yet, but I was happy. <laughs> I had no issues with the beetle, because this time the beetle was all the right colors. So, anyway, There's only one other discrepancy, and it's in the title, or and we'll get to that, or in the in the uh, the cover, which has to do with the pentacle. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll get to that. I will mention it later. One of the subsequent cover... Upside down. Ones? No, it's uh, it's not upside down. It's not okay. well. It's like in in the t in the term of the the the, the storyline, it's non-existent. He uh, doesn't have it at that point. Uh oh, uh, I see. I see. So I he's see. in a yellow jumper or an orange jumper. Uh, and they've thrown with in a, the pentacle. And they throw him in the <laughs> pentacle, even though he already gave it away. I already got rid of it. Yep. yep. Gotcha. Gotcha. Tut, tut, tut. Little little Can anachronism. Even reading. Little well, and now I won't get get to it later. Now we won't get to it later because she forced your hand. Now. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I just know that the uh, the battleground um, book they released the cover art for Peace Talks and Battleground, and everyone was like, "What does it mean that the pentacle's upside down?" And then they were like, "Okay, never mind. We're gonna change our <laughs> cover we just, art. We just drew it wrong. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. They're like." All right, never mind. Never mind. That wasn't a glue. That was yeah. just our bad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So then we get press, pressy Prescott, Deputy but, Sheriff Prescott Tremaine of Boone Mill, Missouri. Boone Mill, Missouri. But with the one S, is it more of like a prez or a press? I was saying prez. You said more prez. Well, I think his short name is Prez, but Prescott is. I think that's all. I just wasn't sure. I was like, I don't know. I can't press. decide if I would say it still with like more like press or prez. Because ordinarily with like a one S, I do Prez, but it is Press Scott. So, so you went with Press, and you went with Prez. I went with Prez for the short. You, you both went with Prez. Yeah, Press Scott. Yeah. Anyways, Mr. President, this way, right? Um. So, anyways. So yeah. <laughs> and he's got. Uh, he invites him into the office, but doesn't shake hands because he's getting sick. Oh yes. I was wondering why make him sick. Is this just to give him a disadvantage right off the bat? Let's talk peace talks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not yet. Um, I think I think that just goes again a little bit parcel part and parcel of like yeah because that's what he was saying fighting this sea monster, lake monster um, was that he was already tired and he was already like run down and he was already at his end and then you know even if he could um, have done magic which he was pretty much tapped out. He couldn't because he was not right. So I think, again, I think it's just, again, that beating Derry, Derry Howen a little. Beating Harry down a little bit and, again, just always giving him a little bit of that disadvantage when it matters most um, of going in so he doesn't just instantly, like, kabooey! Okay, everything's done. I'm going home now. Bye. <laughs> well, it was especially, too, because it starts off with him. Like, the reason he has a cold is because he threw himself into Lake Michigan. Yeah. At the beginning of the story, right? And even that itself was like, what's the reason for even having another monster when you're gonna introduce 
another monster, right? But mm -hmm. it's, as you were just saying, it's, like, also, like, Jim Butcher's thing. Like, he just, like, you know, Harry, like he said, he writes every book on Harry's worst weekend. But it's, like, it's not even, like, we ever get to meet Harry at 100% and then watch him fall to zero. It's, like, we always meet him at, like, 60. Yeah, <laughs> we watch him fall down to zero. It's, like, done, it's yeah. already, like, things are never, yeah. like... His well, and that's usually exactly why he's at, because he's just come out of some other yeah, conflict right. or issue or injury or illness or... Yeah, right. so he's never, ever yeah. best operating. Because, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, no matter what, he's, like, in the middle of paying off some hospital bill. Like yeah. And I always tend to read that a little bit, not even just to show him that, but to me that just seems like a very typical in like shows and whatever that you always show your hero like wrapping up something to give you an eye. Oh, your guy's a spy. He's finished. Oh, your guy's a wizard. Oh, your guy, right? It always gives you that, you know, before they move oh, into whatever okay. that storyline is of what they're bringing you into to deal with, right? Mm. But again, I always find it sort of as like that introductory sort of a thing. It's like, well, you're always just finishing up something else before you start on the new thing. So Starting with an action scene. Multi-purpose, I guess it does, like you say, it does serve to show that, that he's, but again, also is sort of exposition without exposition, I guess, is always how I Got to start somewhere. It. Yeah. The beginning is boring. <laughs> so right. you start with the last thing's end. So start with so, Yeah, start action. with the climatic end or whatever yeah. of something and then be like, up. well, now we have to bring you in and to solve this because look at how you just demolished that last really, thing you every, put you up like against. A, uh, what's that one kid's like record scratch freeze? Like, you're probably wondering how I got here. What was that show? Chris Brown? Oh. Oh, the... Everybody hates Chris or whatever that. Yeah, one? everybody hates Chris. Oh, I don't think I ever actually watched that enough to know, Chris but sounds Rock about right. Something Sorry. Like that. Anyways, point is, is that yeah, like like every beginning of every episode would be like him, like right, he's about to get like wedged or he's shoved in the yeah, locker. Yeah, right. You're, you're like you're being freeze, held by your scratch, ankles whatever, over like, a balcony. Probably, and then it would go back a few days, but like Harry is kind of like I always imagine him just stopping and talking to the camera. He's like, you probably wonder how I got here. We don't have time for that because this other thing started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like it's funny because like every single book is written after after his events, right? And it's funny that even. And then he's just like, I don't have time to tell you everything, so we'll just do the more fun one. But there was like a sea monster in the middle of this, just FYI. Yeah, right. I just don't have time to write down everything. So in the new book that's coming out, who knows when, but it'll be the next one after Battleground. It's uh, titled 12 Months, and it's not going to be written like any other Dresden book. It's going to be like, you know, lots of time skips and jumps and like this and this and this and this and this. And I kind of would like to see... Like, watching Harry, like, like yeah, I wrote all of Full Moon while I was, like, dodging vampires in the third book, you know? Like, he was <laughs> just trying to take his like notes in the middle of another book a couple books later. It's, like, the whole time he was writing Battleground, he was, like, currently locked in, like, some cell in the bottom of, like, whatever, you know? Like, it'd just be really funny if we could just be, like, see when he has the time to even, like, ring these in. Because literally every weekend someone's trying to kill him. So he's just, like, I gotta write him down sometime. <laughs> so I, I was almost gonna say, like, oh, the fill-in for all when he has, like, some of the quiet or like, or like the beginning of the sea monster story and we're yeah, like exactly, so this yeah. was actually like what happened there and then prescott came in and but yeah he just versa. has like bob uh See, i was a bob like overtake his own body and then like scribe it all out like that just you buddy you remember everything that's <laughs> literally how i envision it sometimes because to go i mean everybody's different and i mean like harry's got this whole different like learning and listening thing because of course being a wizard he's got to retain a lot but i'm like i could never go but like that's the one thing that i feel like TV, movies, books, whatever. I'm like, dude, if this was my, like, recapping, it'd be like this podcast. It'd be a lot of, like, um, and whatever, and so, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, all this dialogue, and I'm like, yes, okay, I know you have to assume that some of it is just sort of, um... Author liberties? Well, yeah, right, that, again, like, every word spoken is not necessarily verbatim from the conversation that Harry had, it's just this is basically, you know, and again, a few key points mm -hmm. or whatever, like, this is what we discuss, but yeah, exactly, right, but I always, yeah, kind of like to figure that he's always just sort of, like, like, recap, like, he downloads to Bob all the time, because Bob don't remember just, so when he gets home, he can relay the fresh events of the day, he can relay these fresh conversations, or, like... That's why it makes me laugh that, like, for Harry, the most important part is, like, remembering every insult to every person. I know, right? Like, exactly! Like, you I don't exactly remember what we were talking about, but I got this really good dig in. Oh, and then, man. I don't know, there was something about vampires. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. like... Here's the thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know, Murphy was screaming something about people getting killed. I don't know. But I totally... <laughs> me and the doorman, I totally annihilated that guy. It was pretty awesome. Bob should have been there. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. Like, he just, he, he's just magic, like, a little little like lapel pin or something like that 
that's like an auto record for <laughs> Bob. So you can just, his whole day can transpire. Bob can go through, take all of that, and then like replay it back and he can sort out like the yeah, yeah. important bits. Wouldn't that and be what, nice? <laughs> I'm like, man, I want one of those. I need a lot Me more memory too. on my phone than I have, but Bob is limitless, so. Mm. Yeah. So, so yeah, so anyways, Prez shows up and does this whole... We need you, Mr. Dresden. I don't yeah. mind that Are you're you sick. Are you for real? Why don't you just go to the cops? Like, oh yeah, I know he's like law enforcement only comes when they're like desperate or whatever, and he's like, yeah, I hope you got a strong stomach. Harry is shown a photograph of a disemboweled body, and according to the officer, the wounds are created by something else because he's figured because he hunts, he knows that this is not something natural. And we also find out that the two victims are both brother and sister by the name of Talbot. Which we have been introduced to in the the uh, prologue. Prologue, yes. Yeah. So again, yeah, we, we go back and be like, hmm, is there maybe a connection between well. the scary guys and their last words to... Because this is what I found kind of, yeah, like you say, interesting or whatever, right? So yeah, you've got this big, bloody, disemboweled corpse... And then they're like, uh, and then he's like, yeah, that's only, that's only the first victim, Carl. And he's like, the other one is Sarah. And then they just show a picture of like a woman sitting in a chair knitting. And I'm like, was this supposed to be like a pre-picture? Is this supposed to? Because I'm like, obviously they're very different. I'm like, okay, so obviously she's not all (laughs) disemboweled and cut up. No. But I was like, she doesn't even really look that dead. I mean, she looks maybe a little pale and gray. But she's basically just sitting there looking at the camera, like, surprised. And I'm like, is this just, like, a random, like, photograph of her? Or is this supposed to be, like, the picture they found of her dead? Like, she just froze with her eyes open and her mouth open and her knitting needle still in hand? Well, like, it does say in in the later bits much that, she later. Was, that she was poisoned. So yeah. I have to assume that this is a picture of her, just based off of what we learn eventually. Like, I can't imagine that she looks shocked when she's died of poison poisoning. She's probably vomited everywhere and it's probably much more grotesque than what the picture is showing. So is this just kind of a, a bad picture deathly of her? corpse <laughs> looking picture of her knitting and not like I mean again I'm like no, you brought the, that was you, just a you surprise brought the picture. blood and guts you didn't bring a picture of her laying on the floor of her apartment poisoned? Because I did not get, again it wasn't until much later when they bring that up that I was like oh, I didn't even know like there's nothing here to indicate. You know, like you say if you saw her laying on the floor with like a dropped Bowl if it or was or canama poison, then she'd be paralyzed. If it was what? Canama poison. Canama. She'd be and maybe poisoned. I just Teen again, wolf again. I'll bring uh, it up whenever I can. <laughs> 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 again, just as a very basic, like, did not convey that to me in the moment. I'm like, I guess that you're telling me there's a second victim. But again, I'm like, is she dead? Is she missing? Is she survived? Like, well, they did say right in the like the words right up to there. It says it's like, yeah, it's suspicious, and she died right after her brother did. Yeah, it it you no, know, because he's like, look at the wounds, and he's like, yeah, the other. Then basically, he just says, keep reading. That's only the first victim, Carol. The other one, Sarah. Carl. Or sorry, the first one, Carl. And the second one is Sarah. Emmy hasn't determined what killed her, and but it, it looks damn suspicious, particularly given it happened days after her brother had been torn apart. Oh, so they haven't figured it out at that yeah, point. Yeah, at this oh, point, okay, they don't know. Yes, you're right, you're right. Yes, okay, so they did. Okay, so yeah, so it was that fine. Yes, I did confirm, but yeah, it was just, anyways, to me, that was just, yeah, yeah I was like, again, if this is supposed to be her, her... Death picture. Yeah, <laughs> her, her scene of the crime photo, and, and but then yes, you get a very yeah, nice do. family picture of them all looking smiley and happy. And so yeah, he explains that yeah, it's like seven it siblings who were orphaned young, and yeah. now the two oldest siblings have bit the dust. Yeah, after their yeah, and then uh, mm-hmm. so of course immediately strikes Harry because Harry's an orphan. Yeah, and then you cut to a picture that I also have, and again. I would have to go back to where it is mentioned, but I always got, because we do learn a little bit about Harry's early life with his dad. We know that his dad was uh, a traveling magician kind of a thing, or at least a magician. At some point you will find out he was a traveling and they just went around kind of scraping by, making ends meet sort of a thing. Um, And I know there's like Harry talking about riding around in the back of the station way again. And again, I would have to find the specific scene, but I had always thought that they were on the road 
Like, I swear they were on the road. And I, I had visions of them, like, because he was talking about sleeping in the car, like making a bed in the back of the car and sleeping. I don't think we've gotten to that yet. We haven't gotten to that yet, no. Okay. But I always took it to be like, you know, you're staying in inns and motels and stuff like that. It's easy enough to, yeah, throw the kid in the back of the car to sleep every now and again. Even dad can sleep in a car, but, you know, 50-50. Sometimes you sleep in the car. Home. Like, this just looked kind of at home with, like, the stack of books and the thing. Like, again, it's a little bit vague. You don't get enough of the walls, but it, just, it didn't even really strike me as, like, motel lodgings. Because I'm like, you're right, maybe they would stop sort well, of a full Zoom night. in on the lamp, you'll see it's nailed down. <laughs> but yeah again nothing like supremely critical but i was just like i always i figured they were out of the room yeah yeah if he didn't pass away like in the vehicle or whatever like if they hadn't pulled over but at least again i'm like this doesn't look very mo like yeah. cheap motel to me this looks like more comfy maybe the cozy, artist had only ever seen the tv show maybe i don't know and this is the thing i get like you say that it uh you know hair longer short or whatever certain things I guess they're not super critical, um, but part of me is just like, but why? Do I mean, again, especially in this day and age, like you say, like fan, like fan bases, from what I understand, really took our fandoms really took off in like the original Star Trek days. People really started writing letters and doing and creating fan fiction and stuff in around that time. So that was like the '60s, okay? So you think, but they know now, and, and then VHS tapes really kicked it off when people could stop and pause and, and rewind, rewind. Mm -hmm. and right so now i'm like you know we all like like dissect this stuff to like its molecular level just about I'm because we can rewatch and re re redo over and over and, and over you've and got over a global again. amount of people picking up on a detail that you right you caught this they caught that somebody else caught this you put it and it just surprises me sometimes i'm like is this not really a thing that we do with like continuity like does the author not be like oh no 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 like you totally can't don't make him look like he's at home you know like well, I was going to say, like, there's a part of me that's like, okay, why didn't Jim Butcher, like, you know, throw in these points? But when you're writing a thing and you're trying to storyboard all this other stuff, it might be, like, small points like that you skim over. However, uh, I believe that Jim Butcher has said in interviews before, too, that it's like, you know, he has to use his, I mean, every author, really, they have to use their own wiki because they make so many drafts that they don't remember what's canon anymore. Like, they mm -hmm. send it to their editor and the editor sends it back and they send it back to the editor and they send it back. And he's like, I don't know what you guys know because yeah, I've, I've written, got... you know, he's like, I wrote death scene 11 different times and i forget how she actually went you know or whatever yeah so it's like small exactly. things like that he's like he's always got to look it up too so even you know but my point is is that it's like for something as small as like oh yeah he dies in a motel room not <laughs> his house but yeah. again it's so zoomed in i mean well like, and, and, and i mean that's the thing right these and i know these are the nitpicky fan base things but it's just certain right you know like when it seems like slightly bigger than that not that again you can really tell anything from there but anyways i did like in the next in the next panel where he's then talking about dumorn anybody else does it look like harry potter to anybody else harry with some like crazy hair and like emma watson's version of hermione standing like right next to him Maybe a little. It really looks like uniforms. Ron's face, if only it was orange right. hair. I can see that. <laughs> so we've got all of them. We've got Ron's face, Harry's hair, they, they, Hermione's. Or they look like they could be sitting next to Snape. Right, or some such kind of other, but I just... And especially because I think it's part of the picture. Because like, they're in uniforms, too. Well, that's right, right? Yeah, they're in like their school uniform. Same thing. Like Maybe that's it. Maybe it's a vaguely like red and yellow striped Gryffindor tie, too. Mm -hmm is what it kind of looks like it could be. But I like the detail added in. You've got this clearly very historical and old painting behind. Um, yes. And uh, I like how, more. that's what I was going to comment to you, because right above Harry's head is some of the creases and folds of the the fabric or what and it's part of the painting but it also looks like he's got like really crazy spiky hair mm -hmm. <laughs> looks like his hair's like shooting up like you know an extra like four inches off his head because i think it's just part of it but that i think was what also made me get like the harry potter vibe yeah it's all going on i just like how it shows his wealth so i can't find the name of the painting title um, oh. it just shows he's very you know ostentatious 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 pretentious he's got all this you know Shit yeah, kind of highfalutin. And Not wizard and in the basement. <laughs> yeah, no, he doesn't wear a bathrobe to go down to his sub sub basement. No. He's got yeah, like man a with big, a mansion. Yeah, man with a mansion, a big study, fireplaces, really huge wooden desks. Like you just know that's gonna be like a yeah. whole thing. Yeah. 
But yeah. But yeah, this is where we do we do get a shot of Murph there. And this again, he was like uh um I claim my best friend's partner. And I'm like, we sort of know that they are and will be, but at this point, I don't know, is that a fair like is that fair for a hair like again, speed things along, make it simpler rather than trying to have like a four paragraph explanation of his and Murphy's relationship. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think this book, this this novel actually does capture the current situation of them quite well. Yeah. Because I, I, it does say that they are best friends, but at the same time, he says that, that there's a quote later on um, where he says <laughs> where uh, basically how he lost her trust. trust. Yeah. So it does acknowledge that, that sort of dynamic. I guess. It just felt to me like in the original novels, like Stormfront and Full Moon and this you know, that Harry himself wasn't really referring to them like best friends. They were yeah. close and they had like a really good working relationship and a partially uh, personal relationship. But yeah, it was just like, since when is she like your BFF? Like for you yeah. to be saying at this point, like, yo, my BFF was all like, you know, I'm like, mm. well, even at this and point, even, he doesn't have anybody, does even he? Even to say though, when, like when, um, well, we will meet Michael later, but he does have Michael right now. We just haven't met him yet. Mm. But it does say, like, at the end of Full Moon, like, you know, despite the tension, you know, he went to Carmichael's funeral and she went to the girlfriend, Kim Delaney's Kim, funeral. Yeah. Right, like they did go, yeah. they did accompany each other to each other's funerals, which is like, even if there's been a little bit of broken trust, that is a little bit of like camaraderie, like you know, like okay, I, like I do, I guess, I guess part of my my notations on this was like kind of like true but premature, like you know, does actually depict it here, but I was like, does does only constitute best? <laughs> like Murphy <laughs> might have other friends. Murphy, you know, is a little bit more social. She has all her cop colleagues and things like that but i was like but harry i was yeah, like know. so just the fact that murphy's really like his only friend right now is that automatically i think that does automatically i <laughs> make her his best friend but but, but as yeah. we see like he'll even refer to michael as his best at points too right so it's like you know yeah. it's murphy and michael we just haven't met michael yet so you know can't give it away too soon yeah but That's michael fair. does exist and they do know each other right. at yeah. this point so That's dresden true. does decide to take the case and I had to laugh a little bit at this because he shakes the hand of Prez, <laughs> which after he, he didn't want to shake the hands in the first place because he's got this cold. Yeah. Like, oh. And, and maybe <laughs> maybe this is through the lens of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Where I'm like, what Wash are you doing, hands. man? <laughs> That's funny too, though. Hands. That's true. He came in and sat down. We didn't see Harry go off and wash his hands. It's funny, though, because it's, like, you can kind of tell a little bit, like, what the author was reading. Oh, don't mind me if I don't shake your hand, I'm sick. So the author didn't draw it. But then a couple pages later, the author, sorry, the artist is what I mean to say. Yes. The artist says, thanks for your help. And so he's like, okay, I'm going to draw a handshake, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's not thinking about, Yeah. oh, yeah, right, right. It's like, I think it's, like, cues from there. I wonder if any of this is, like, like, I remember finding surprising at one point when I learned, like, way long ago. But when you find out that, like, movies aren't shot, like, sequentially and things like that. (laughs) And you're like, well, so I'm like, who knows? Maybe depending on how they draw their panels or do this, too. I'm like, who knows? Maybe for some reason he drew this one before he went back and drew, like, the one that, you who know, knows, whatever. Yeah, right. But, yeah, it's all squishy, so, washy, timey, wimey, yeah. wibbly wobbly <laughs> stuff. So this is the other thing. Is it just me? Do they occasionally have, like, weird words that seem more, like, bolded? That's just printing. That's just the general. It's, it's just um. Okay. It's literally just the inking process that happens. I read comics all the time. Yeah, I was it's gonna, just an inking process. It has nothing to do with the. Okay, because I was gonna say every once in a while it seems like it makes sense to put, and other times I'm like that just literally seems like the word in the middle of the sentence. I don't see where that. Would be. So okay, yeah. that is just. That's well, what I, I thought. I was like because I thought of that actually yeah. part of. I was like that I'm, doesn't make sense. Am I further. emphasizing this? Like if you, why if you read a lot of comics, you'll see that. But yeah, yeah that's oh, that. Yeah, okay, simply just the process. of, yeah. So the next stop is Boone Mill in the Blue Beetle, and we get a, another couple of pop culture references: the Millennium Falcon, the Batmobile, and, and of course the, the Blue, Blue Beetle. Beetle. And Harry is introduced to the sheriff. Yeah. Of course, he offers to shake hands. Come on, Dresden. <laughs> Just get that those germs everywhere. Well, it took a few hours. Maybe he'd gone and showered and cleaned up by then. Then, do either of you get the reference to Don Knotts? I would expect Tanzan to get it more than Jessica. I don't know who Don Knotts is. Okay. Do y'all remember uh, Mr. Well, do y'all. Does Tanzan remember Mr. Roper from... 
Or not Mr. Company? Roper. He was the first one. Roper was the second one. Yeah, Three's Company. The original landlord. No, I only remember Mr. Roper. Oh, good Lord. Well, anyways, he, Don Knotts was um, an actor of that time. He was like Barney Fife and stuff like that. So if you go back to the Andy Griffith show, which, yes, folks, was black and white. And Andy Griffin was the mayor, of, or the mayor, the sheriff of Mayberry or whatever with Opie. And Don Knotts was like Barney Five. His, but it's a comical kind of goofy, a derpy kind of derpy kind of yeah. And Don Knotts played a lot of those kind of of roles and things. Just a little bit of a slapstick so comedy. What this sheriff is based off of? So no, this guy's a lot more grumpy than that. But I think that hick small town sheriff um, stereotype kind of a thing. Right. Or like calling the bald stooge curly. Yeah. Maybe that's all he's leaning into. <laughs> well, not There's such a grump. Wait, but he just... Yeah, hang on. Where is that? I was going to try and see if I could find sort of the reference to where he's... Dang it. I'll point out that if you look at the art, Tanzan, uh, the sheriff never takes his handshake. No, he does not. So, yeah, no he, germs for him. <laughs> yeah, he really wants nothing to do with Dresden, in fact. Like, and he, he doesn't even know who Dresden is at this point, too. Yeah. And just, like, extra funny. <laughs> just, yeah. like... Oh, yeah. He just does not take a liking to him Takes whatsoever. Just from him. on site. He is the the con man. Yeah, nuh-uh. Yeah, there you go. I think, yeah, I agree. He says, uh, you weren't kidding. He makes Don Knotts look like Dirty Harry. So yeah, it's just that very, he's very, oh, that. very, very, very is not dirty. Harry ask at all. But yeah, quick Google search, you'll, okay. you'll find some Don Knotts in this. So point is, is that the sheriff at least leaves them alone so that they can do their research. And uh, Harry gets the rundown on, you know, the situation and makes a plan for where he can at least expect to find the monster. And Harry does this whole like, oh, he'll be there to see his curse. Yeah, he finds out the funeral's happening the next morning or whatever, and he's like, oh yeah, they doesn't matter. Um, Prez kind of points out, he's like, yeah, it's a documented fact that one thing all kinds of criminals can't resist, whether they're serial killers, arsons, rapists, is they all want to torture the victim's family and see what effect they had or whatever showing up at the funeral. And but this is something that seems crazy to me, because if Harry is thinking this is a supernatural bloodline curse, he knows already that the one dude wasn't following McFinn around. So it's like, this already seems crazy to me. Like, you've got these, if you've got this, like, again, knowing how the book ends. But I don't think... I understand. But from this perspective right away, like, why would you think that? If you think it's just a random series of unfortunate accidents or something like that, you know? And I get it. He's been all carved up. The one guy had a neck car accident. One girl's been poisoned. Okay, fine. Maybe there really is somebody around doing this. But it just seems crazy to me that, like, you know, if we were looking at big baddies who we haven't met yet, but supernaturals who've been around forever, they've got better things to do than just stand around watching human guess, okay, funerals. Okay, but in all fairness, I don't think Harry has come to the conclusion yet that this is a bloodline curse. Oh, that's true, because like, he hasn't talked to Bob on Tremaine, oh, okay. yeah, Tremaine just showed up in Chicago, and Harry's like, okay, oh, give right. me a Oh, right, all he knows out. is only two Talbots have died. Yeah, okay. so he, he cleaned up whatever drove down yeah. to Missouri. Because he's worried that it's it's a werewolf again. Because yeah. yeah, right, that's all the right, tie, right, and right. he's like, is there still a werewolf left around, which again the poisoning one doesn't necessarily fit with, but the rip to shreds one. But even so. then, you know, he would know that, you know, McFinn wouldn't want, well, I guess McFinn wouldn't, but maybe the FBI sorts would. I don't know. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I, just I mean, again, wise, they, yes. yeah. Again, that's probably a little bit of suspension of disbelief. Whatever. Mm-hmm. We're just going to go with it because Harry's so sure where, yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. not like 100% of everybody who ever commits a crime. Judges. That would make it real easy to track down a lot more of them, but hunches are not admissible in court, people. <laughs> yeah, but again, right? Yes, it's yes. it's very often that a lot of times, you know. Okay, next scene, he talks to Bob. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. So Bob and Harry converse, and Bob puts it plainly that Talbots, Ta- Talbots are cursed. And then we get a little bit of the family history. We find out that the rude major was found mummified after running afoul with the locals. That his daughter went crazy, his grandson turned into a vampire, etc., etc. So, Yes, and Did this we, is where you find out about what happened to all of these. Oh, yeah, because his aversion to sunlight or whatever. No, that's, like, yeah, oh, sorry, like, that's my assumption. Is, that was your, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it seemed well, that was, that was another, the, yeah, because <laughs> she, she just, the, yeah, the, the daughter thinks that her, her son had been, re- tried to kill him or did kill him. Was replaced by something. Yeah. She's uh, afraid her son was replaced by something not human. 
Yeah. yeah. Or the brother or something like that. Her son, yeah. Okay. Oh, was it a son? Okay. Oh, yeah, after trying to kill her youngest son because she was convinced he'd been replaced by something inhuman and then another of the grandchildren came back with an inexplicable aversion to, to sunlight and that. Um, so, yeah. We find out, and then yes, another yeah. So ran into something on a country road, but nobody could ever determine what what it was <laughs> ran into. So all very strange and unusual, and it's all concerning them. See, and it strikes me that something has to be some kind of influence for these curses for this curse to be running all these people afoul, especially for like the the grandson turning into a vampire like <laughs> yeah well there yeah there has to be some sort of supernatural like ooh look at you you guys are interesting so let's let's oh pick like what on makes you. them stand out for things to come and pick on them because they have or marked whatever. blood I think. yes yeah 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 something i mean again depends on and we haven't got a lot into it this early in the book um There'll be a little bit of discussion of it in, in later books. We'll find out sort of some different types of how Super curses natural. come about. Yeah, mm-hmm. sort of like how you get targeted and things like that. And sometimes it's not even necessarily that these people are a distinct beacon, you know, that the vampire's walking around and be like, hey, that person's like glow in the dark. I'm going to go bite them. It's just, it could be something subtler that's just more drawn, you know, like the, like, the ooh, luck You principle. smell good. Just whatever, right? You know, just that, that fate and circumstances align to put them in the mm-hmm. quote unquote wrong place, wrong time or right place, right time, right. depending on, or in this case, it's their blood curse. That's being, yeah, that, that's, that's well, I mean, their bloodline has been targeted, but again, what that is to make that, you know, like you say, sort of how that plays out could be a lot more, so, which is why they're also very different too. that, you know, it's not just like one thing happening to them. Like McFan, they were cursed to be werewolves. So that's just all that happens. Whereas these guys are just, they're cursed to die. Whether that means a vampire is going to get them, whether that means they're going to be in a weird car crash, um, any of those I, kinds of things. I'm in a very strange situation where I actually know how this plays out. Yeah, you don't. Neither of you have finished this we book did not before we recorded this first issue. There's six issues in Ghoul Goblin. Oh, I yeah. finished reading it. I just didn't oh. finish making my notes. Oh, I see. I did okay. not quite make it all the way to okay. the end. I think I might be at the beginning of the sixth or okay. something. I'm pretty close so to the end. This is like I'm partially not. like I don't want to give the give yeah. it away right now. But yeah, I have yes, when we get to up. there's, it, it, it's less fate. <laughs> that is, uh, you know. Yeah, you know. And so there you go. Yeah, like you say, these crazy. Um, it's funny though. I like it. We'll get there. Natives <laughs> that he runs into or Jim whatever. Jim a I mean, funny again, guy. Again, they could just be yeah, following him around and doing. But, anyways, um, essentially, Bob yeah. gives him the rundown, right, and yes. makes them all like listen. That's the other thing too. This Bob, is so recent. Bob is drawn more. I think he was in Welcome to the Jungle as well. I caught myself. I didn't say Jungle Book. Um, but here too is like he's always drawn a little more sinister than. I give credit for Harry's Bob being, because he always says he's like mm-hmm. the little campfire, sp- right? He's a school, but I mean, again, he's always kind of like wisecracking and yeah. whatever his relationship with, with Harry. And there are moments when Bob can be scarier and can be more dramatic or more intense or more somber. But these somber. aren't the moments that, they, that he is that dramatic. Like, no, you, yeah, here he's just telling, but I mean, again, they always go with, like, the big, glowy Talking eyes, skull. The very, yeah. But very, yeah, it's really just like a wind-up, crank-up skull that chitters. That's more like, <laughs> I mean, not quite, but yeah, kind of somewhere Snappy between jaws. the two is exactly right, yeah. But these red, glowy eyes well, much, the eyes just look so very ominous. Angry, yeah. They don't look like just warm, glowing eyes. They, like, sp- spiky like hellfire eyes or whatever the way they're drawn as opposed to like glowing like friendly amber. soft amber, amber eyes, eyes yeah. that kind of a thing right that's just again one of my things i always find funny the way they do this they're like it's a school let's make him spooky and i'm like nah. unless he's trying to be i'm like bob on a regular basis is yeah just another human just skull a sitting on a shelf <laughs> right just, <laughs> just just a bit of a horn dog spirit in a Chat- <laughs> yeah exactly and some right? chattering teeth it's he's like good. he's like harry's <laughs> college friend that's just never exactly. outgrows being his college right yeah. <laughs> It's like, yo, gee, where's the weed and the boobs? But anyways, yeah. So we get to the next morning where Dresden... Okay, just... I, I have to ask about this because I wasn't entirely sure if he 
he did he actually cast a circle around the graveyard or did he not cast it like or because he talks about he did he's like it was tedious work my enchanted circle had to be both wide enough to surround the maximum number of suspects and camouflaged enough to escape the notice of our target okay so he did do something what he made it out of or not so he does do the circle he does do a circle around the graveyard so that he's he can try and be aware of of something supernatural coming in and out okay because it says that they're supposed to have some kind of halo around them but it doesn't but nobody ever ends up with that halo no and i think in regards to that it's because it ends up being the the grave digger guy and i think there's like a little shock or something do they not refer to i think he could potentially have already been on the premises is the problem is that he started out within the circle when Harry came and did it, like he was again the groundskeeper, grave digger, he was on site. So as everybody else came to the graveyard to attend the funeral, they all came from outside the perimeter of it. Whereas Buddy might all already have been inside when he did it. Okay. Henceforth, he didn't pass through the circle to. And everyone technically belongs there too. That was the other problem is that everyone was invited. That was supposed mm-hmm. to be there. Yeah, well, not even... Well, yeah, I mean, just that's it. That The only supernatural, right? Like, again, as far as we know and tell from the other... Again, I didn't quite read to the end. Maybe I'm missing something about the circle gatherers here. Um, but yeah, like, the Talbots are just the Talbots, and the sheriff is just the sheriff, and all that kind of stuff, so that there yeah, wasn't I mean, anybody else to light up. Prez does the, say everyone here belongs, right? He was able to list every single person and knew Oh, all, yes, right? right, that way is to, yes, that's so how even they see, then, yes, you know? I got what you're saying, yeah. That without the halo, how they were able to determine it was because everybody else made sense. Because I have a question. Yeah. But it might be a spoiler, depending on if we get it to this episode or not, or if you've even read into it. I think it. we're finishing at issue one. Okay. <laughs> I think so, too. Um, Amber, how does she get past without being glowy? Because she is a supernatural entity. Yeah. That is a good point. Um, or is it because she belongs? Artistic failure? The artist didn't try. Well, I guess, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that is, because you're right. Um... Because as far as I can tell, this circle was completely ineffective because did she well, okay, either did she, of let the me, no, let me hear. Fully enter the circle? Was it supposed oh. to be a halo? Because I'm pretty sure it was just going to be a faint aura, right? And when Prez calls out okay, the jail, or the fuck, goblin, the gob, well, the Dave gra- gra- grave digger, then Harry opens his sight. Instead of doing an entire area sweep. He was just like, look at the grave digger. So he looked at the grave digger. He opened his sight. He didn't look at any of the other guests. Yeah. Well, okay. if he just done the entire guest, maybe then he would have seen that faint aura or something like that. Okay. But so no, it, it does say. Um, um, so yeah, he's like the idea was that it would have no effect on humans, but when an inhuman breached it, the spell would cling to it in the form of a faint aura. Exactly. Not so, a halo glowing not around a halo, them, but a but faint a cape, aura. But a oh, faint. that was my fault. I, I just Whatever. Well, okay. That's but, fine, but the point is is that a faint aura doesn't mean it's visible. To me, I took Unless it at the same way. Unless you're using your... I took it at the same oh. way that it would be sort of visible to the naked eye that somebody would be a little bit glowy. Um, Even I would say no. I'd be like... Because here's the thing. In the Dresden universe, no. it's not like... Because in the Percy Jackson universe yeah everything is a monster but there's mist always going it changes everything it doesn't just change the monsters it changes all magic whatsoever so it doesn't matter who's casting spells or who's sword fighting or who's a monster everyone just sees it as like a gunfight between mobsters or something you know whether you're a good guy or a bad guy or something like that the mist covers yeah anything magical unexplainable right in the dresden files universe no if the monsters want to disgra- dis- dis- disguise themselves then they have to disguise themselves, but magic is still going to be magic. People might deny what they saw, but they're still going to see magic. And if Harry wants to see not a monster, he has to put up his eye. It's like it's not like oh, you can just see through the mist, or you can just make yeah. the mist stop working. It's like no, like either you put up your third eye, or the monster's in control of what you see. I get, and, and that could be um, oh, again yeah. not not the take that I get on it because there's other times Harry can see through things i mean again like With his third eye yeah but they're no they're t- like they make a uh an ointment or whatever oh well yes see, right That's so, a bit same of thing. A- so he doesn't have to pull up his so anyway okay so in this this is why my that this worked is- in the same way though it was a potion specifically meant to act like yeah but i'm just saying there are i'm i'm reading this here so when they pass through so it says when they come through it so when amber shows up to talk to he's like hey 
um, how come you didn't stay home? Like I asked, we're on duty. And she's like, I know. And he's like, uh, can I count on you to hang back? So maybe it is a case of her like staying. Maybe she didn't come all the way into the service. Maybe she did stay further back from where he'd set up his circle. Cause I mean, he oh, did, he made it big enough to sort of encompass everybody, but he might not, part. he didn't encircle the entire graveyard apparently. So it could even be that the grave digger too is so both just enough. Uh, yeah. Cause you know, like quite a ways around to fit, you know, 30 people around the, the, well, see, I could buy that one. Cause if you look at the panel, um, where they're saying, ahem, so how exactly does this work? Someone here will not be what they seem. These are your people. Who doesn't belong? You can see Amber is in the background behind the two gentlemen. Yeah. She's not in the picture with the rest of the funeral service. I think yeah. that's probably makes the and most sense. And that's it because that that's just after he's saying, period. he's like, yeah, can you hang back? So she may have knowingly or just mm -hmm. luckily because of Tremaine prevented herself from being discovered. And again, with the grave digger being a little bit on the outskirts of yep. it so maybe that was why neither of them so but again it's hard to open say up his it, eye it he was just looking at the goblin either of our theories because we don't know for sure if they were in it so yeah yeah but exactly he confirms that way but yeah he doesn't look at amber with that and again i just had to say what was with that funky spelling of amber right amber 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 <laughs> <Ambre. laughs> um where is amber for this episode to comment on that yeah but, um <laughs> Yeah. That's and our then, first indication that something is off. Right. Her name is just... <laughs> yeah. Spell, spell your spell. name weird. Yes. Yeah. So they, uh, they do eventually confront the goblin, and the goblin gets the jump on, jump on them. Yeah. Oh, so I don't present, think we met before. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Present Harry get hit with a shovel. So that's the first of the, the, the beatings that start for Harry. <laughs> yeah. And, and there will be many. Yeah, he's already whacked and figures he's busted a couple ribs or severely bruised or something. I mean, getting hit with a shovel is rough. That's yeah, suck. yeah. Well, yeah. especially he yeah. says broken ribs. Have Big you ever rib. had a broken rib? I have not. Oh yeah. my well, goodness! Thank goodness that you haven't broken. But I've definitely had like sprained and. Like, I've never broken any bones. I'm superior. Ha ha ha. There's nothing you what? can do about it. Like you can't wrap them up. Like yeah. they just you just have to wait for them to heal. And so everything, like including breathing, hurts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just breathing hurts. Yeah, it's probably awful. a couple more broken bones. So, yeah, Prez makes a giant announcement to the. <laughs> goblin before firing at him in this dramatic display and then calls it an old cop, cop habit when he's been called out on it and I love that moment. Old <laughs> cop habits die hard. Yeah, that's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, you should have shot him before opening your mouth, right? The only one in danger here is you, monster. And the die hard. Like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And the goblin takes Got Prez's girl. girlfriend hostage. You know, I gotta say, he's pretty eloquent for being a goblin. Like, I, for being a never never entity, he is very succinct. Yeah. His dialogue, like, I'm okay with that. Like, he sounds into, like an intelligent man. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I wanted to ensure the poor deer got a proper burial. Please tell me you're not going to endanger these grieving innocents any further. So. Yeah. Although I still don't necessarily. I mean, I guess I don't know enough about goblins specifically. Um, because again, we're uh, knowing what we know about ghouls. I'm pretty sure that that that's the brother that got torn apart. So if the goblin poisoned the sister, like, are goblins just mayhem? Like, he doesn't care about eating her all up or anything like that. Well, like, see, I would have thought they were kind of cousiny. That are they both are carnivorous. Well, yeah, maybe you know he's like I've got seven victims. I don't need to eat them all. And they're well, they, and they're on a. A fight with one another to for territory, not necessarily for mm -hmm. for food. Their their goal end goal is to kill people in a certain order. But again, yeah, well, again, I think that's where it's been drawn in. Like you say, this is the curse drawing them in to kill. Because why specifically? I mean, the Talbots are again. Even if Joseph's place was like in the middle of their territory, I'm like everybody else isn't living there. So why does everybody else need to... Like, you know what I mean? Like, it seems that mm -hmm. targeting simply the Talbots for whatever their territorial dispute is doesn't hold a lot of water. It's just that they're hunting on the same ground. Mm -hmm. But it seems like, yeah, they're specifically there to hunt the Talbots because that's who they're supposed to be hunting or right. whatever. But I don't know. Again, it just, yeah, seems There's weird. some again, vague moments of this, this whole graphic novel. Yeah. 
I don't know. But that uh, pretty much wraps up this this uh, well then episode let's go issue back. number one. Mm-hmm. Of which I had a few issues. This concludes our episode six point one, a family cursed. Thank you for listening. You can find us online at freeflowrambling.com and macanellies.ca. There we have links to our other podcasts, social media, and other fun tidbits. Please subscribe if you like what you're hearing, and please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and to see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk.